This episode of Atomic Trivia War 9000 is brought to you with help from editor Don Thompson and questions from our rogues gallery of submitters. Send your questions to ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com today. Woo-hoo. All the answers are going to be either MacGyver or Mr. Woo-hoo. My boobies really are not that big. That sounds dirty. Woo-hoo. Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm keeping score play out because Jason. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this show? <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is Atomic Trivia War 9000, and I'm your host, Jason. Let's meet our contestants. They call her the Puget Sound Powerhouse. Hailing from Washington, she is Ro Mantanona. Hail to the Queen. Hey. Queen. Of awesome? I don't know. Okay, princess. <laughs> I'm not a princess. <laughs> On the inside, he's just a cuddly little teddy bear who wants to be loved. From Costa Rica, he's Omar Hernandez. Uh, On the outside as well. I bring you all love. (laughs) And returning from his voyage to the motherland, our resident red-blooded Canadian, Kevin Archibald. Heyo! I had something witty to say, but my mind's just been blown by that new intro. Whoa! (laughs) Yeah, how you like that? That uh, That's something. That is something. I like that. Kev, you know who that is going, I have no idea. No, who is that? That would be you. Oh, my giddy aunt. Very nice. <laughs> Guys, uh, as you can tell from the new intro, I get bored easily. This is no secret. And I like making things better and stronger and faster and harder. <laughs> okay. And that's what's happening to ATW9K for at least the next couple months. Because uh, I just need a change. It's spring. It's time for spring cleaning. It's time for breathing new life into things. So let's get out of that little rut that we've been in all winter and get inventive with some shows. What do you say? I say, sure. woo-hoo. Go for it. <laughs> All right, then it's time to get right into this. Oh god, you really need to change that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would get bored with that. <laughs> well, we are changing how this is done in round one. I've got 15 questions. And you're going to alternate between them. This is totally unlike the way that we were doing the hot seat. It's more like the way that we did the uh, the head-to-head battle with Omar and Roe last week. So uh, you drew straws before the show began. You agreed to go in a certain order. This is going to go Omar, Roe, and Kevin. So you're going to get randomized questions. I used random.org to go ahead and mix these all up. There's, uh, there's no agenda here, guys. I didn't set it up. It's not a stacked deck. I don't believe you. So you might get yeah. easy questions. You might get all hard questions. You might get a good uh, mix. It might start hard. It might end easy. Who knows? But number one goes to Omar. Yes. Omar, tonight's the Batman show. These are all Batman questions. So we're going to start off with one about a Batman villain. It's a pun. First introduced in 1966. What Batman villain's real name is Edward Nigma? <gasps> is it the same one in the in, in the movies? Could be. Can, can we do Stilzies? Um, I, I will. I will tell you when you can do Stilzies. Okay. Okay. What's the name of the, of the character? Well, it, it's a funny name. Yeah. First introduced in 1966. What Batman villain's real name is Edward Nigma? No, nah, no, no That's idea. Uh-huh. Ro wants a Stilzies. No, no Ro Stilzies. Wants a Stilzies. No, Ro, no. Ro wants a Stilzies. No. Ro, go ahead. That would be the Riddler for the Riddler Enigma. Oh wait, yeah, I, I knew that. I, I thought that was oh sh- You're overthinking shit. Did you Omar. say it, Omar? You're overthinking it. <laughs> I over yeah, I was overthinking. It. God damn it! I knew it was Riddler. One point. I totally. I said Jim Carrey. I knew it was the Riddler. I just thought that was like like a pen name for for the Riddler kind of dealy, and it had another name before. Um, this might have been a language barrier issue, too, because the whole joke with Edward Nigma's name is that his first initial is E, his last name is Enigma. Enigma, yeah. Yeah, Enigma. I know that. I- I'm not saying that you're stupid, Omar. Just ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you, shut up. Next. <laughs> Next one goes to Ro. Okay. What is the last name of Bruce Wayne's butler and surrogate father, Alfred? Alfred Pennyworth? Yes, Pennyworth yes. is the correct answer. Oh, yeah. Very nicely done. On to Kevin. That was like the only trivia I knew, so uh (laughs) uh-oh. Number three. (laughs) Well, we're going to talk about names again. What was the first name of Bruce Wayne's father, a prominent surgeon and philanthropist? Uh, 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 Sorry, a little constipated with the answers tonight. I was going to say, did you enjoy that bowel movement? It's it's, uh, James, what's his name from the movie? Uh, <laughs> oh, something Wayne, something Wayne. Uh, it's Dwayne Wayne. 
Yeah, Dwayne Wayne. <laughs> Dwayne Wayne. <laughs> yes, and I'll bet you didn't know that Bruce Wayne had a, a an uncle, Dwayne. Really? Are you no. no, no, no. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't on a different world with Lisa Bonet. Right. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't know it. Do any of you guys know it? Oh, God. I can't think of it for the life of me. I want to say it's like. I'm going to say it's Bruce. No, it's not Bruce. It's like Michael. It is Thomas. Oh, Thomas, Thomas Wayne. Thomas. And his mother was Martha. Thomas. Thomas. Number four. This one's back to Omar. Never mind. Superman's stepmother was Martha. So that's like, that's not very thoughtful. Okay, go on. In which Joel Schumacher movie was the character of Dick Grayson, an orphan circus performer, introduced? Oh, uh, that's Nipple Batman. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's the title that it went Oh, uh, That's uh, Batman and Robin, the movie, right? No. Well, wants to steal these. No, 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 no. That was Batman Forever. It was Batman Forever. Sorry you missed that one. Oh, I wanted to steal these. Oh, you didn't get it. Uh, number five, here it's your chance for a point, though, Ro. What horror icon played Egghead, the world's smartest criminal, in the 1960s Batman TV show? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, what horror thingy person? What horror icon played Egghead, the world's smartest criminal, in the 1960s Batman TV show? Horror icon. And he's suck awesome. It, suck it. It sounds like Kevin's calling dibsies oh, wait, on the Steve. Wait, 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 wait. I also know that. Wait, I also horror know icon. It. Okay, so I'm thinking horror icon. It could either be Freddy Krueger, but I don't think he... That was, that was before his time to play Egghead. Hit me! On icon, icon, <laughs> horror icon. Like, no, no, was it the guy who played... No, it wasn't the guy who played Dracula. I really don't know this, so... I'm at least trying to guess, like, the horror icon, at least. That's my that's my try, but I don't know. I give up. Give it to Kev. Kev? It was the star of Hilarious Host of Frankenstein, Vincent Price. Vincent Price is the correct answer. Oh, okay. Good job for you. Uh, renowned for Last Man on Earth and uh, the as the voice in the Michael Jackson Thriller video. Yeah. The Fly was his big one, wasn't it, back in the day? Very, very much so. Uh, not the Jeff Goldblum version. No. 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 <laughs> Uh, the score is Omar 0, row 2, Kevin 1. Kevin, you can tie it up here with this question. Name four actors who have played Batman on screen. Oh, that's a good one. <gasps> Name four actors who have played Batman on screen. Are you talking big screen or small screen or any screen will do? Any screen will do. Okay, we'll go Adam West. Yes. Val Kilmer. Yes. Uh, uh, George um... Jetson. Come on. <laughs> Where was this deal for you? All right, let's go Chris Christian Bale. Yes. Yes. Uh, and Michael one more. Keaton. Hey. Yeah. There you Good are. Job. George Clooney was the other you one. You couldn't remember Clooney. Yeah, George Clooney. That's George Clooney. And then the other one is Kevin Conroy. Did, did you say No Michael one remembers Clooney? that one. Who doesn't remember Kevin Conroy? That is the voice. That is the voice. Other than Steve Bloom. He's a good voice actor, too. So, Kevin, you've got it all tied up here with Roe, but Omar, you're lagging behind. Let's see if you can catch up with this one. Number seven is what Ace Ventura actress was originally cast as Vicki Vale in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman? but was replaced when she broke her collarbone in a horse riding incident on set. Oh, what? That is weird. There was no horse riding in that film. <laughs> they actually ended up ca um, cutting the scene. Wait, repeat that question? What Ace Ventura actress was originally cast as Vicki Vale in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman, but was replaced when she broke her collarbone in a horse riding incident on set? Oh, that's two people. There's two people. I know two girls. Uh, okay. okay, let me get a coin. Let me flip a coin. <laughs> Going two face. I know the name of one of them, and I know the character's name of the other one. Did you flip a cologne? I flipped a hundred colones, and it says Courtney Cox. It's the other one. Oh, Sean Young, it's Sean Young it's right? The Sean lieutenant Young. one, right? Yes. The, the one that was the cop. Einhorn. Fuck it. Sean Young, right? Sean Young is the answer. Okay. So number eight, Ro. Mm -hmm. Angered by social decay. A 55-year-old Bruce Wayne comes out of a decade-long self-exile and adopts a young female Robin only to face the wrath of the U.S. government in what 1986 Frank Miller comic book? Oh, man. Uh, sh Bat Dark Knight. Oh, God. This is like, oh, my God. <laughs> the Dark... No, Batman... No. Oh, don't think of stupid movies, Rochelle. I read this. You don't have to be a comic book fan to get this. I... This is one of the top five comic it's... books I, I can in see, the Batman I can, I can see the head. The head is coming out. Yeah, the head, like, it's like the top part of the head on the comic. It's... The Dark Knight Returns? Oh. Yes. The, yeah, yes. Yes. The comic is, is like Batman's silhouette with a, yeah. some lightning bolts. And I said I could see the head because you had given birth to like three quarters of the answer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and Kevin, what He-Man artist 
produced Batman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond, in which he also voiced the leader of the gang known as the Jokers, with a Z. Wow. Well, let me tell you, I was just talking to my wife about uh, He-Man artists over dinner tonight, and, uh, well, we couldn't pick a favorite. You know, it's so hard because we love (laughs) He-Man artists. Uh, I suspect that my wife might be having an affair with a He-Man artist right now. As we, sp- I don't know. Nobody knows this question. Can I get a guess, even though it's not a Steelzies? Go for it, Ro. Is it Bruce Tim? It is, and you get a point. Oh, wow. yay! Four for me! Nicely done. It looks like Ro knows a He-Man artist. Smart ass. Uh... <laughs> uh, number 10. We're back to Omar. Yes. Before he told Rocky to eat lightning and crap thunder, what movie star played the penguin and later was Galobulus in the G.I. Joe movie? He did the penguin? He played the penguin. Uh, I know I know the guy, but I, I don't I don't remember his name. It was Rocky's coach, but it was Rocky's coach. It was Mickey, right? But Mickey was the character's name. That's right. And I need the actor uh, name. Very famous actor no, died not uh, too long ago. I do not remember the actor's name, unfortunately. Throw throw uh, I know who it is. Throw Kevin your lifeline. Yeah. Is it uh, hey, Burgess Kev. Meredith? It is Burgess Meredith. Good job. Mm. Something, reason I was thinking of Danny DeVito, because I was like, I just thought about the penguin, but I was like, no, wait, he wasn't in Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a very different movie. Yeah. <laughs> Number 11 goes back to Roe. Roe, you're going to get saddled with a difficult one, though it might not be okay. as difficult as you think. Okay. Known for committing crimes that correspond with holidays and significant dates, this villain often wears costumes that correspond with the date of the crime. Huh. <laughs> so lame. Come- Extremely lame. Really? Coordinated with the date of the crime? Known for committing crimes that correspond with holidays and significant dates. This villain also often wears costumes that correspond with the date of the crime. That's so stupid. I don't remember this Batman villain. No, no, no just just make up the first name. The, the most stupid name you can come up with. The Holidayzer? Dazer or the... The Holidayzer. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. That's not it. <laughs> the dater? The... You know, that, that would have been good compared to what his actual name is. <laughs> I don't know. I was like thinking like Clock King or something, but I don't think he was in BTOS, so that's why I'm like, I don't know who this person See, is. See, Clock King is not a bad one because it, it was, it's kind of a spinoff of Calendar Man. Calen- like calendar? Oh my god, that was horrible. Calendar Man. It's calendar Man. Come on, this is the most stupid name ever. Oh, yeah. It's the worst villain since uh, Daredevil's fought Stilt Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's there's one called Rock the Leap Leaper. Guess what he does? Oh, Leap boy. rocks. Yeah. Not in the Batman universe, though. Number 12 goes to Kevin. During development of the 1989 Batman film, Alec Baldwin was considered for the lead role, and producers wanted to pit him against what actor of The Hunt for Red October... And Charlie's Angels. Sorry, uh, producers wanted him, sorry, say from there on? During development of the 1989 Batman film, Alec Baldwin was considered for the lead role. And producers wanted to pit him against what actor of The Hunt for Red October and Charlie's Angels as the Joker? As the Joker. As the Joker. Hunt for Red October. So it would have been Alec Baldwin as Batman and who? Yeah, yeah. As the Joker. Sean Connery was not in Charlie's Angels, was he? Who else was Bill Murray was in there? Bill Murray would have been an interesting Joker. Uh, oh, 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 Tim uh, Curry. Good job. Good job. Yeah, we got there. We thought it. Ah, we he would have made a good. He would have made a, a very good Joker. Can you imagine that? I thought. Yes. I, I've always thought Tim Curry was like super underused uh, in in Hollywood. Like I, I just don't, don't think that. I kind of think he's in the wrong time. He's like he's made for vaudeville. If you ever see that Muppets where he's on, like the classic '70s Muppets, he rocks that. And I think that's what he's made for. Is like classic. Podville stuff. I'm guessing based on your age, Kevin, and, and the things that you like, did you see him in Earth 2? I didn't. No. Uh, no. Is it is it worth seeing? I watched the first episode on Netflix. We have it streaming here in the United States, and he showed up at the very, very end, like the last 30 seconds. And that convinced me that I need to watch the second episode. I, I just haven't yet. Uh, he's been in some quite bad stuff, despite being quite an awesome guy. That show also has Kurgan. Ooh, okay. <laughs> you've, you've got my interest number 13 we're all the way back over to omar omar you are pointless sir yes i know someone has to be the best at something i have to be the best at being the bottom this is your last chance to score which i'm sure is something that you often heard in high school <laughs> uh, i wasn't paying attention so it's okay <laughs> the original Clayface was an actor by this name who was given uh, who was driven mad by news that his horror movie, The Terror, would be remade without him. Really? 
<laughs> really, Jason? This, this is the last question. Oh man, this is your last question. My heart goes out to you, buddy. <laughs> you got you got hit up with a hard one. That's the way that the dice fell. Okay, I'm gonna say his name is Ikaf Yalk. You're not as far off as you might believe. His name is Basil Carlo. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> the original Clayface was an actor by the name of Basil Carlo. He can suck. Uh, over to Row. Row, you're going to win tonight if you can get this one. Okay. If you don't get it, Kevin can tie you up. Okay. Uh, can get what? Sorry. This is not good because now you're gonna put now see you put pressure on me and you know I choke. <laughs> Damn. Wow, just phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> what is the simple name of the Joker's number one guy who is Jack Nicholson's close friend in real life? Oh wow. <sighs> the Joker's sidekick, whom he referred to as the number one guy in the 1989 Batman movie, and Jack Nicholson's close friend in real life. Are you looking for the actor's name? Or the... I'm looking for the name of the character, the simple name of the Joker's number one guy. I was like, dear old, it's not dear old dad, but whatever, I don't know. I'll even tell you, it's a palindrome. The palindrome? So like a palindrome like Hannah or something like that? That's, that's a palindrome, right? Yes. Okay. Depending on how you spell Hannah. Is it Taco Cat? Taco <laughs> Cat. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> dad? That's all I can think about. <laughs> I'm my number one guy. I haven't seen that movie in forever. So that's oh, why I, I don't know. The funniest part of that movie, I always laugh, is when Jack Nicholson, uh, a.k.a. the Joker, asks for a gun. And Bob hands it to him. Yes. Oh, Bob. Gun. Bang. And the Joker shoots Bob. Okay. Well, Kevin has a chance to tie. <laughs> that's okay, though. I did pretty good. Number 15, Kevin, you can tie it and stop Rose Reign of Terror. Yes, go, Kevin. Why is my reign of terror? That's not fair. I did horrible <laughs> last week. I should be like, yay, Rochelle redeemed herself. Would you like some cheese with that wine? <laughs> what androgynous performer had a batman theme hit music video that dominated MTV in the weeks leading up to the 1989 Tim Burton film's release? You know, this was the first record I ever bought, and I got it at Records on Wheels uh, with a gift certificate. I'm marking it down uh, with point number four, then, because it sounds like you've got it. Uh, it would be Mr. Prince. Mr. Prince, a.k.a. You probably couldn't hear that because I said a symbol. Oh, <laughs> I heard it. Unpronounceable symbol. The song was the Bat Dance. Yes, classic. That's so, that's so funny because I was actually was listening to Prince, like his album, like his greatest hits the other day. I was like, yeah, erotic city. Do, 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 do. So I was like, oh. Stop the press. Who is that? Vic Evil. <laughs> so with our hot seat round finished. Rowan and Kevin are the wieners. Yay! And Omar has a big egg. Uh oh. Zero, zero, zero. It's okay. I'll take it with pride. Listeners, I need your help because I'm going to do more themed shows. I hope you enjoyed all this about Batman, and we're going to come back and talk a little bit ba about Batman. But uh, I need your help for next week, or actually probably the week after, uh, based on on our release time. But send me your questions in the meantime about Star Wars. Ooh. Ooh. That's right. I'm looking for you to send up to five questions to me each about the original trilogy and surrounding mythos. None of this freaking prequel <laughs> bull. We don't believe in that. Nope. Send those questions to ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com. That'll come to my email box. Tell me your name. Got to have a name with the questions. And please tell me where you're from because I always find that Ooh. extremely interesting. And remember, the questions shouldn't be made to stump our panel. The best questions are the ones that are interesting. No, the best ones are the ones I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like any questions? Is that what you're like saying? Like 90% of them. I don't. Because you, you apparently don't know any of them. Oh, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to take a commercial break. Hi there, this is Stu the Beard Perry entreating you to please listen to our show for those about to rock on simplysyndicated.com. Please listen to our show, please! Hi everybody, Rich here. You know, one of the best things about Simply Syndicated is the great community of listeners we've got and all of the things you guys do to help us out. Something you could do that helps us spread the word about our shows is to let people know that you're listening on Facebook and Twitter. All our episodes have sharing buttons on them so you can tell your friends about us with just a few clicks of the mouse. Just visit our website at simplysyndicated.com and click the sharing buttons to help spread the word. Thank you to Stu Perry and to Richard Smith for those words. Uh, Ro, real quick here before we talk a little bit more Batman, who is our Photo Friday winner? Oh, yes. The winner of Photo Friday 
Omar wants to plug this Photo Friday Angelina Jolie movie. Yes. Movies, um, <laughs> is, uh, Aaron Shaw from Massachusetts. So good job to you. But I would also like to give a special shout out to uh, listener Mohammed Sharmark, who also annotated in his email which films Angelina Jolie was naked in. So he <laughs> says, hopefully Omar will appreciate this. And those he's my are... kind of man. He is my kind of man. <laughs> yeah, so those movies are Hackers, Pushington, Changeling, Wanted, Original Sin, Taking Lives, Gia, Foxfire, and Beowulf. You know, if you guys like listening to our show, you should get even more trivia at the end of the week by going to our Facebook page or heading over to simplysyndicated.com to play Photo Friday. It's fun. Rose shows you lots of photos, and you just tell her what they're of, and there's always a cool theme. Uh, I, I'm not ashamed to say that I would like to plug Angelina Jolie as well. Yes. That that was definitely a photo Friday I could get behind, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, really? also, uh, lately, Don Thompson has been posting some awesome trivia on the uh, Facebook. So get I was going to say something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to say also, um, I finally changed the format our, of the our Facebook page to the timeline view. So it's easier to f- And I also changed the URL to our uh, Facebook page to be easier to find. So just facebook.com slash ATW9K, and also thank you to Don Thompson, listener and editor. Uh, he's been posting a lot of good trivia, so be on the lookout for that, and you can see that on the timeline on the right side, where it says recent posts by others on Atomic Trivia War 9000. There we go. So you guys have answered the questions, now let's talk about Batman. Batman! I need you to tell me, because I, I let you know at the beginning of the week that we'd be talking about Batman, so you've been thinking about this, but what's the coolest factoid that you picked up this week? Okay, who's first? Oh, I went first with the questions. I can go first with this as well. Do it. I think this goes into my realm of things. I found <laughs> a way to, to, to mix Batmans and boobies together. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to go the Batman well route. <laughs> the what? You know, Batman well. Oh, the Batman well, yeah. I, I actually I actually was tempted to do the Batman well because he also appeared in one of the Batman movies later. But no. Did you know that you have nerve? Was responsible for the '60s Batman show. What? Really? I did not it know. It seems that. like it seems like he uh, really liked like comics back in the '60s, and he decided to throw like a like a costume party theme kind of thing in, at the mansion. And he had some actors uh, throwing out the the cheesy like uh, comic book lines, like "Golly gee whiz" or all that crap, and people were responding so positive positively to it that one of the producers of the show wasn't the party and he pitched the idea to abc at the moment and that that's where 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 it was born wait he pitched the show at the party no he pitched the show after the party oh that... because of the party see i had it in my mind that he like pulled some guy aside and the guy wasn't really paying attention because he was look, looking at the bunny's asses and, and he was all like uh sure whatever just just put whatever on the air that you want it's okay i, I i'm busy right now <laughs> but yeah hugh hefner you have to wow. thank him. That's wow. cool. Nice job, Hef. I have something else to thank him for. So, Kev, what did you discover? What did I discover? Okay, uh, I will. Uh, I got to put this one out in, in the form of a question and see if uh, if you guys know this one. Uh, Detective Comics number thirty four, one of the first appearances of Batman, and certainly one of the first cover appearances. Uh, Batman is wearing something strange for him on his belt. Can you guess what that might be? Did he have a gun? A gun. Yes. Wow. You guys were like on that, like white on rice. <laughs> yeah yeah seriously uh early yeah that was like batman was like the second costume superhero like ever next to superman so the rules were still kind of being written about caped crusaders and super people and stuff so he wore a gun early on in the previous issue he had used it to like plug some vampires uh like in their coffins it doesn't look very sporting actually you see him like standing over these coffins <laughs> like putting them full of holes with his silver bullets but uh, but yeah, as soon afterwards, they decided that no, Batman doesn't shoot people, and Batman is actually phobic of guns because of what happened to his parents. Uh, and so yeah, there's my trivia did, of the day. Did you know that Batman still killed people? He killed well, criminals, even after the the guns were taken away. He still killed people. Yeah, yeah, he was written kind of pulpy at first, for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Bro, what you got? Um, it's a simple one, and I also have to thank Jeremy for helping with this. I was like, Jeremy, think, help me think of Batman stuff because you're like the Batman freak. He's like, okay. And he says, um, did you know that Batman keeps kryptonite, a kryptonite ring on him just in case if Superman ever went rogue and it's like in his utility belt or something? Yes. So, I don't know. A lot of people. 
Yeah, in Jeff Loeb's hush, he pulled it out and beats the shit out of Superman. Mm-hmm. Huh. Oh. I'm like, yeah, Batman, kick Superman's ass because he sucks. That's that's by the way my personal favorite Batman book. It's one of the few that I own because I'm not a huge comic book nerd. But uh, if you gotta own a couple, the the couple that we've talked about today, The Dark Knight Returns and Hush, those. Those are good books. <laughs> but uh, I, I think there's just one more Batman question we have to, to cover, and that is, who is the best Batman? Oh, it's hard. It's like choosing Kevin your favorite Conway. child. Kevin Conway. That's valid. <laughs> he, he is my favorite as well. Really? I mean, you, would have to, you would have to make a darn good argument to sway me from that, because the, the cartoon Batman is... The best Batman, yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't even say the best Batman. Just he's the the iconic one because there's so much more animated Batman content than there is live action. Exactly. I think I mean, there's more focus yeah. on Batman as Batman in those animated series. Like in the films, there's a lot of Bruce Wayne, a lot of the bad guys, and then Batman's like almost a foil for that. Whereas in the animated series, you see him a lot more. Like actually, actually Batman. And there's a lot of animated series content too that uh, shows the subtlety behind Batman, where he. Um, it, it was wrestling with different morals. He has a very low key relationship with Wonder Woman. Um, you, you see him uh, dealing with the gun thing. The, the animated Batman stuff is really good. And I'm not just talking about the animated series. There's also uh, Justice League and some of the DC movies that they've been putting out lately. It's good stuff. And the Arkham Asylum games, same actor does those. And also in the, uh, wasn't like the Gotham Knight or something like that, the animated version from like the makers of Animatrix. They did a bunch of sh- short animated things on Batman. Yep. Also voiced by Kevin right, Conroy. Right, right. So no dissent. Kevin Conroy is really going to get it hands down with, with no contenders. Christian uh, Bell would be okay if he wasn't like, <laughs> like all raspy. That was. No, nah, he all. sucks at Batman. I, I don't know. I, it, it, as Batman or as, I mean, I can, if I was to pick my favorite Bruce Wayne, I got to go Michael Keaton. Uh, but yeah. No, come on. No? Who's your favorite Bruce Wayne? No, I mean, they, they're all pretty terrible. I, I think Christian Bale is the best one out of all of them. As Bruce Wayne, But he's, yeah. he's still not good. Even Val yeah. Kilmer makes a halfway decent Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne's not hard to play. No. <laughs> You think Bruce Wayne's hard to play? No, Bruce Wayne's not hard to play. <laughs> Bruce, not hard to play, Bruce yeah. Wayne is very vanilla. Well, he isn't. I mean, you're right about Christian Bale. I mean, when you have the the early troubled Bruce Wayne who goes to China and all that. That that was pretty cool. That was like not vanilla. That was kind of cool. But once he decides to be like Bruce Wayne to hide his Batmanness, then yeah, he becomes kind of archetypal. And you said it right too. It, it is him very much pretending to be Bruce Wayne. He is Batman. It's people always say that that's something that's unique about Superman, how he's really Kal El and he pretends to be Clark Kent. Bruce Wayne does the same thing. It, it, Bruce Wayne is an act, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but uh, I, I think that draws our Batman discussion to a close, and we'll definitely return to Batman in the future. Don't worry, that's one of my favorite properties of all time. There's a, there's a lot to mine out of that, and 15 questions isn't nearly enough to cover it. But I think that for at least tonight, we've done Batman justice, pun intended. Well done. <laughs> But before we go, is there anything that you want to plug? Yes, I want to plug something. Uh, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Emma no? Stone this week. I'm in an Emma Stone kind of mood. Oh. <laughs> Emma Stone. Wow. Isn't she in that movie? Wait, wait. What? Yes, I can say without any doubt. 21, 21 Jump Street? Or I'm not sure if that was her, but whatever. She's in the movie coming up. But no, um, I'm a big fan of Kickstarter. If you guys don't know what that is, it's like basically people pitch their ideas and for any mm. sort of media. And you put a bid, you donate to them. Ignore the truck. <laughs> you donate to them, and anyways, um, I have a friend. His um, he has an iOS game called Professor Cat's Amazing Ma- Amazing Machine, and you can just bid a dollar, and you'll get a game for free if it becomes successful. So just go to Kickstarter.com and look up Professor Cat's Amazing Machine. And it's basically an iOS puzzle game. So look into that. Just a dollar. So whatever. Cool. Is it a maze game? Yes, it is a maze game. Oops. So it's an amazing game. Yes. Wow. Amazing okay, game. I get it. That's uh, amazing. I, I, I think you belong on the 60s Batman with that one. <laughs> Kapow. <laughs> or cacao. I was like, cacao. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be your like super villain. You'd be a cacao woman. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's take cacao woman and get out of here because I think we have some games to play. But thank you very much for joining us, everybody. We will see you next week. Later. Bye-bye.